Good morning New Year 7s and good morning to your parents too. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss Kelly. I am the very proud head teacher of Co-op Academy Bebbington. You are very welcome to our school. You are very fortunate to have got a place here. We've had lots of people appealing for places in Year 7, so well done on securing your place. As I said, I'm a very proud head teacher. I've been at the school now uh, four years. It'll be the start of my fifth year in September, um, and I love our school. We've got a fantastic staff, we've got great young people and fantastic facilities. Mr Moore will speak to you in a moment about what our high expectations are of you. Um, we do expect the very best of behaviour, we do expect the very best outcomes for young people. But we also recognise that young people are good at lots of different things, not just being in the classroom. And that's what we're good at here, recognising and celebrating all of those things. So welcome, enjoy this online assembly and we look forward to seeing you all in September. Welcome to the Head Teacher's Office. I want to talk to you about what our school mission statement is and what our values are. I'm quite sure that you'll have seen those uh, when you came round to look at the school last September but I just want to talk to you about them again because they're really important to us and they underpin everything that we do in the school. Our mission statement is shaping exceptional futures and that's what we're about in education, making sure that we take our young people and do everything we can to support them and get them to the best position in life. And if we do that, we're really proud of the job that we do. I've got a fantastic staff here who are committed to that mission statement. We're, we all believe in shaping the exceptional futures of our young people. But what does that mean in practice? Well, the first thing is, we place our students at the heart of everything we do. So all our policies and all our procedures, we always talk and think about young people. What will be the effect of those on our kids? and we have a great uh, school council so young people have a voice here and actually help us steer and develop the way that we're going. We want to try and remove the barriers for learning because sometimes there are things that get in the way to enabling children to achieve their very very best and our job is to work out what those are and shift them out of the way so that children do really really well and we want to give you a vision of what you can be we don't want people to think low, we want people to think high. What can I do with my future, my career? And that's our job to help you make those decisions. We recognise and celebrate children achievement. And that is a child's achievement, not just academically, but socially, emotionally, and in sporting activities, and in baking activities. Young people are not just clever, they're also skilled and it's making sure that we embrace all of those things together. We want everybody in the whole school community and that's staff and that's students and that's support staff and pastoral leaders. We want everybody to achieve and excel in whatever form that may take. We want to provide you with an aspirational vision for your future and also make sure that we give you the right learning pathway so we've got about six learning pathways at Co-op Academy Bebbington and we try and support children to go on the right pathway. So it might be that some students do single science and they do all the academic subjects. It might be that some students do um, a, a reduced science and maybe a Spanish or maybe not Spanish. Some children choose a vocational route but we've got lots of opportunities to make sure that you go down the right pathway. We are relentless at this school, and I'll use that word again, we are relentless. We are absolutely determined that you will get the very, very best and you will achieve the very best outcomes. But what's important in being relentless is that we recognise we're a team. So parents, students and school, we're working together to support our young people to get them the very, very best. Respect is an important thing too. Everybody in the school is respected and respectful 
and we're respectful of our local community. We truly are a family school and we believe in looking after each other. And we embrace healthy living. So sports important for us, well-being is important for us, that children's emotional and mental well-being is important because you've got to have those things right if a child's going to achieve. So shaping exceptional futures underpinned by all of those things I've just talked about. Fundamental to that though is that teamwork and making sure that you come to this school with exactly the right attitude. Thank you. So, what are my intentions for the school? Well, we want to make sure that at the next inspection, we're judged at least good. The sixth form is already judged good, and um, our results year on year have been improving. So we are convinced, as are the Co-op Academy Trust, that we will get a good result at the next inspection, um, and that will please us all. We will aim for outstanding, but we want to be at least good. We want to build on our outstanding sixth form. <clears throat> We're actually in the top 10% across the whole of the country for our sixth form outcomes. We want to maximise our new systems and make sure that you get the best GCSE or BTEC results that you can get. We've got a unique curriculum. We've got a school farm, we've got construction, we've got health and social care, business studies, Princess Trust, and a D of E as well, the Duke of Edinburgh Award. So we've got some really good things going on at the school and we want to continue to develop on those. We want to improve further our learning environment and we're already working on that over the summer. And we want to maintain and develop our family ethos and the way that we work with our community. One of the things we do need to be better at is telling our story and we're looking at uh, how we market the school a little bit better than we do. Uh, people out there don't know how good we are as a school and we need to be better at telling that story. So what will your son or daughter get from us or you as a young person? Well, you'll get really good teaching that's well planned and extends learning. You'll get a really good tracking and intervention process. So we know when children come to us what they got at the end of primary and we set them on a pathway. If children fall beneath their targets, we catch them and do something with them to intervene and get them back on target very, very quickly. I think that's a real strength of our school. Lots of extracurricular opportunities. Staff who genuinely care and go the extra mile. And Ofsted said that in 2017 when they came to inspect us. We've got outstanding pastoral care for our young people a very growing ethos of high expectation and achievement. Staff who've got great professional conduct and our main aim is to make sure that every child is a happy child who thrives. What do I want as the head? What's my main aim for you? I talked earlier about shaping exceptional futures, but here's a bit more. I want every student, regardless of their ability or background, to experience an outstanding education. I want every student to have an outstanding role model. People who are professional, kind, knowledgeable and interested in the student. And I've got that with the staff that we've got. Every student to be shown how to learn, encouraged to work hard and become independent and resilient learners. Every student to achieve outcomes that are the very, very best for them. And every student, this is really important, to leave school with good memories sound morals and to become really good citizens who make a positive contribution to life in general. Hello parents and children, I'm Phil Moore, Deputy Head, um, and I'd just like to spend a few minutes really just talking about uh, our standards in school and expectations. My main role revolves leading on attendance and behaviour. So, um, like I say, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just explaining um, some, some of the key requirements in school and also some of the opportunities we provide. Um, in terms of opportunities, obviously secondary school, we're on a much bigger scale and we offer a full range of uh, activities after school, trips, 
and enrichment activities really to try and broaden their horizons for students but also to give them those in raised aspirations I suppose to give them those life skills that will help them gain the best employment opportunities in the future. Um, things that we run, we are formerly a sports college so we do masses around sport and uh, not just a competitive sport but also recreational sport as well and hopefully your children will avail themselves to those opportunities. We run things like Personal Best which is a, a, a programme around sports but also developing mental health and also uh, health and well-being um, as well as which we offer a full range of clubs, drama, through to geography club, manga club etc. Okay, and on top of that, we were also cognizant of the fact that we want students to be able to cycle and swim safely, and so we actually run a program called Bikeability and Swimming to en enable students to access them activities, which a lot of other secondary schools don't get the opportunity to provide. Um, like I said, we ran over 300 trips and activities last year for all the students there and again your child will get the opportunity to get involved in those as well. Um, D of E were absolutely massive, we had 100 students covering um, gold, silver and bronze last year so again there, there are some wide opportunities that aren't always offered within other secondaries and we've got lots of specific clubs as well that go right across the school. We're also big on fundraising and doing our bit for charity. So over the last few years we've fundraised for the likes of Click Sergeant, Clare House, the New Ferry Appeal, Teenage Cancer Trust and again we try and make those fundraising activities inclusive, get all the students involved and make them fun as well. But again we're very conscious of doing our bit as a community school. I'm just going to talk a little bit about behaviour and about uniform and standards. Um, in terms of behaviour, we have a, a high culture okay, of expectations and high standards within school. This is a place of learning and we support all children to do their best. Um, but please be aware that poor behaviour will be challenged. Um, parents have signed that homeschool agreement. The child should have signed that as well to actually see what our standards are. Um, so just make sure you support the school in everything we do. Um, the idea of ha about having behaviour policies is to support everyone and make school a happier place. Um, we do in our policy state quite clearly that students must behave to and from school as well. So be aware any students who's bringing the school into disrepute um, will be punished there as well. In terms of classroom expectations, pretty similar to primary, we expect students to have good manners, bring the right equipment, work hard in class, nothing different than any other secondary school across the Wirral. And again, in terms of behaviour, we have lots of visitors on site and they're quite impressed about how calm their learning environment is. 96% of parents who were surveyed on our parents' evenings last year um, say that behaviour is good or better. Um, so again, we, we don't stand any nonsense and that's supported by the fact that actually we, we permanently excluded 10 students in the last academic year. That's not a badge of honour, um, but what we have done is done our best to support those children but reach the end of the line. Um, so again, we're, we're, we're pretty firm in terms of our standards and expectations there. Uniform and jewellery. We expect students to come to school with the right equipment and also be smartly dressed. Our two uniform suppliers are Will Uniform in Birkenhead Precinct and the other few, uh, uniform store in uh, Barnston. Um, be aware that the plan is in September that all students will be wearing uniform. Um, things may change subject to COVID restrictions, however that is our intention currently. The information for that is in the handbook but also on the website so again probably best to start on the planning for uniform earlier. Um, 
Shoes is, is a bone of contention. We have switched now to plain black leather shoes. Again, there's all sorts of styles indicated on the website on which is acceptable and which isn't. Please make sure you buy the correct footwear. Um, watches are allowed. One pair of, of, of um, gold studs in the, in the ears are allowed, but in the lobes, no other sight. Any haircuts, obviously make sure not too short, nothing outrageous and natural colours if the hair is dyed. And again, go policy with no false nails, eyelashes, long eyelashes, um, nail varnish, needs to be in natural colours, etc. So again, all this um, information is, is supported on the website. So if, if you need to check or clarify, either ring the main office or, or look there, please. I'm just going to talk a little bit about mobile phones and use of social media. Um, obviously we're, we're, we understand that students need mobile phones quite often for safety aspects to get in contact with parents. However, as a school during the day we expect that mobile phones are kept off and out of sight. Um, sometimes staff will ask the, the phones to be used for educational purposes and in those instances that is fine. The, the system is the first time the mobile phone is, is used um, in class without authorization it's confiscated by the member staff but returned to the students at the end of the day further breaches of that policy mean that parents will have to collect their mobile phone and in some instances we have had to say students don't bring them on site again because they distract from learning quite often and we understand you know the actual uh, detriments that they, they cause for, for the school itself in terms of social media um, it's the bane of our lives in some ways. We, we know students are, are really active on these sites. Many of them are illegal for the ages of students under 13 and quite often they, they need to be 18 years of age. So we ask that parents support the school in monitoring their usage and, and limiting the actual aspects where they're at things come back into school and um, we always say we're, we're not going to be dealing with with issues that have occurred on the weekend what we suggest is and again there's some aspects on the website which we cover is we say that to parents actually can you make sure that the, the suitable use and also that you monitor it if, if there's an issue there report it to the website and, and hopefully we'll have less issues come into school we'll also do our bit to educate the students in September around the dangers of, of social media use and safety so things like you know unprotected sites and using ghost mode on snapchat uh, snapchat rather so you, you can't be actually tracked um, so again just try and support us in that if you can the second thing we're going to talk about is, is attendance and punctuality um, our target is 100% attendance where possible. We understand, you know, students are off from time to time because they're ill or they've got appointments. However, we see the impact of attendance on, on outcomes at the end of year 11. And, and again, it won't surprise you when I tell you that a lot of students who do poorly in their GCSEs, one of the main issues around that is the fact that their attendance has been really low. So again, um, it's about us working in partnership to make sure that any hurdles or barriers are overcome. If there's a problem, please let the school know um, quickly. Um, we, we did issue the most fines in Wirral um, around non-attendance last year and, and we do fine for, for unauthorised holidays as well. So again, just be aware that, that we need to limit that time and any appointments where possible can you make them outside school time if you can. Lates, where again, we understand that you know students sometimes come late to school, however we'd ask that you, you give a note to actually explain that, that, that reason for absence where possible. If students have a pattern of coming in late regularly, uh, we do issue detentions that are one hour on Fridays after school, but the majority of students do their bit and they get in on time. We know that obviously if the class is there at the start settled, then we, we can get on with the learning more quickly and students coming in late has a detrimental impact.
Hello, my name's Mr Hayden and I'm the Special Educational Needs Coordinator here at Co-op Academy Babington. Um, I'm really sorry that this is the first where time that we're meeting virtually. Um, I wish it had been personally uh, and I look forward to meeting you all um, when I can in September. I did however want to reassure you that we've spent a lot of time uh, in virtual meetings and with phone calls speaking to year six teachers and primary schools and collecting as much information as we can um, about the students who will be joining us um, in September. In the next few weeks you'll be getting a phone call from either myself or one of the um, pastoral staff um, in school or the senior leadership team to get your views and opinions as well about how we can best support students in September. Um, and when we do open in September, for those students who would um, have normally had some kind of enhanced transition, we will be making arrangements to make sure that they can come in and visit a key worker or somebody first and maybe arrange um, a phased return for them if they're very anxious. Um, more generally about special educational needs at Co-op Academy Babington, um, we offer a graduated response um, to student special needs. Um, for students who are on the SEN register, we um, uh, write a pupil profile uh, and make sure that the relevant information um, is shared with classroom teachers so that they are able to inform their planning um, and make the adjustments they need to through good quality first teaching in the classroom. Beyond that, um, for students who've got um, more significant difficulties, we offer um, small uh, literacy and numeracy interventions and we use the STAR Reader programme to help students um, improve their reading. Um, we have a counselling service in school for students who are struggling with aspects of their social, emotional and mental health and we also have um, a room that we call the hub that where students can be timetabled to go for a, a nurture session, maybe a chat with a, a key worker once a week to help organise their timetable, talk through any worries or concerns. Um, beyond that, we work with lots of outside agencies uh, in school, including um, the Educational Psychology Service, Health Services in Schools, Response, the Brook Advisory Clinic, Social Care, um, the Anger Management Programme run through Kilgarth Outreach, um, and the Youth Intervention Programme. Um, we're always willing to meet with parents um, if things are not going well or you have any uh, concerns or anxieties, and I really look forward to meeting you when I can. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to talk a little bit about arrangements um, for the forthcoming months and into September. Obviously, due to COVID restrictions, things have changed dramatically. Um, ideally, we would have met your child on site, we would have had a meeting with parents, um, but with the social distancing measures, that's not been possible. But please rest assured, we have spoken to all the primary schools and got the key information around your child and all that relevant information. Um, to compensate for the lack of face-to-face -face meetings, we've already started calling each and every family um, to talk to the parents, ask questions, um, allay any fears, and also to speak to the child as well. Um, please make sure you've, you've actually returned the student information booklet. That's very important for us to enrol your child um, for September. Um, in addition to that, Obviously, you're watching this video, you'll see on the website that we put in a virtual tour, meet the form tutors, there's information podcasts and various bits of relevant information which will help you navigate you know, the transition into the secondary school. So the plan is COVID dependent for the year seven to return at 8.40 on Wednesday, the 2nd of September. Um, you'll see on the website what to do around lunches. We've got a cashless system in school, which again, once you fill the booklet in, you'll be registered on. And also there's the opportunity for students to bring their packed lunches. Ideally, we want students in at 8.35 as a minimum for an 8.40 start and we finish at 3 p.m. There are school buses, um, 7.13 from Rock Ferry Ports on like New Ferry and 6.13 from Eastham. They are on in the morning to bring students to school and also they leave from school at 3.10. Again, details are on the website. In terms of free school meals, things haven't changed. 
If you think you're eligible post-COVID, then please apply to the local council to, to make sure that's in place. In terms of information, we're, we're information rich. Look on the website, there's a school Twitter field. Uh, we've also started parent mailing parents with information. There's the parents handbook, which you should have had a copy of, which is extensive and covers all aspects of school life. Um, you've also got the pastoral team and I've included on the website details for the email from Miss Lee, the pastoral leader. So again, you can use that information for any queries and also the office will be staffed over the summer. So thanks for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the new academic year.